One of the challenges with um, doing a job on the car outside the garage or just in the doorway of the garage here um, is that when the garage doors open, um, it blocks out light from this street, from this um, strip light here. Um, so what I've done to address that is I've mounted a spare strip light that I had here down to the bottom of the garage door so that when I open the door, which I'll demonstrate, So the strip light then is under the garage door, so it's about um, 10 inches up from the bottom of the door. And then that'll give me down lights, which will be nice and handy. And then what I want to do is rather than have the cable running up here and getting in the way of the airline, um, I want it out of the way really. So I'm going to mount it, well, I'm going to route the cable over that side of the garage door and then I will wire it up to this strip light here but I've, I've got a pull cord switch that I'm going to use so that I can um, switch it on and off easily and that will hang just at the side of the door there so that's uh, so that's that project so I'll bring you back when I've got the uh, the thing wired up and operational. So I've got two ends of cable here now. So it's uh, the lights are off in here. The, the power to the lights is uh, is isolated, so it's safe. Um, I've tapped into the light fitting there, and uh, so I've run a length of cable that I need to go up to this switch, which is going to be located up there. And um, I've just, oops. Sorry about that. So I've just stripped these cables now with the wire strippers and we're going to feed them through into, into the, the back box of the switch uh, and then I'll, I'll connect it into the, the back of the, the uh, pull cord light switch. So I'll bring you back in a second. Okay, so what we've done now is the two negative wires I've connected together with this connector block and then the uh, obviously the live wires um, go into the switch. So I'm going to attach this up to the joist now and then uh, I'll screw this up together and then I'll run the cable down to the light fitting on the door. Okay, so the light's working. Um, the pull cord switch is installed there. Uh, it's wired up and I've just uh, pushed the cables up out of the way up over there. Um, so there's enough uh, length in the cable here to allow the door to open and it doesn't uh, pull the cable tight. So the door's up as high as it will go. Um, I just don't like this loop of cable. So there's a loop there when it's open and then it dangles loosely uh, when it's um, when the door is closed, which I don't really like. So I'm gonna have to find some way of uh, sorting that out. But it's functional, that's the main thing for now. So I'll tidy this lot up and uh, onto the next yeah, I couldn't one. leave it dangling as it was. So I've just put a couple of P-clips just onto the wall, just on there. Um, so I can reach the switch when the door's open and I'm outside. And I've just put a little loop to pull the door shut. Right, moving on. Okay, so the next thing I was going to talk about was this. So this is a piece of shadow foam. And I bought uh, a packet of five of these off eBay and um, it's 30 mil thick it's got a thin layer of of black on the top so i've used this for organizing some of my tools so here's an example of one of the drawers that i've organized using the styrofoam and when you peel the black layer off the top it reveals this uh blue underneath so it's 
handy to indicate if there's a tool missing and um, and it stops things rattling around that was my concern um, if I if I left my, my measurement kit loose in the drawer um, it was going to go flying around everywhere which I couldn't I couldn't bear the idea of that so um, I haven't got loads of kit here I've, I've put my imperial micrometers into storage because I never use them really um, but uh, I've got some nice micrometers so I've got um, I've got my 0 to 25 Mitsuyo digital mic um, this one is my 25 to 50 millimeter micrometer and this one is a 50 to 75 micrometer and um, and of course here's my digital caliper it's not a vernier caliper chaps i've got uh, a vernier protractor this one's a draper um and it's it's quite good um so this gets you somewhere near um i've got a set of uh angle blocks which um are in this other drawer down here so i have a, a very accurate set of angle blocks here which you ring together a bit like gauge blocks um, and these are accurate to below a minute so they're in there um, and then i've got a few old uh, gauge blocks here which um, they're a bit rammy um, but they're ideal for work holding or um, if i if i want to do something uh, fairly rough i've got a really nice set of uh, Mitsutoyo angle blocks, which I use for uh, for inspection purposes. Um, I've got this Edge Technologies uh, dial gauge holder here as well, so that's easy to remove and that fits in there nicely. Um, I've got a two micron Mitsutoyo lever arm dial gauge in there at the moment, and then I've got this um, a square in here. Uh, an assortment of bits and bobs in here, so spare ruby tips, extensions, and things like that for various gauges that I have, um, and a couple of spare attachments there. So um, it's dead handy. Um, I can get everything out of here very easily. Um, and as I said before, you can see if something's missing, and it stops things moving around, which um, which is important to keep this kit in good order. So. This is my, my car toolbox. And uh, so I've spent a bit of time trying to organize things so that it's easy to find what I'm looking for. Um, and um, so in the top here, um, I've got my sockets and I've, uh, I've got brittle torque wrench, which just fits in the top here nicely. Um, I bought one of these Nebo, um, Nebo, Nebo, um, uh, torches so this is really handy it's got a, a Cree LED strip light here which is either white or red it'll flash red as well and then it has a torch on the front there uh, I've got this breaker bar at the top here as well half inch breaker bar it's a half inch torque wrench um, that thing is a beast and it's uh, so handy um, I've got all my sockets on on rails here so um, if there's one missing it leaves a gap and that socket can only go there um, well it should only go there if it's if it's been put back in the right place so I've got my half inch deep sockets at the back uh, three eighths deep sockets there quarter drive deep sockets here I've got some hex drivers um, and then these are my half inch sockets so it's a bit of a mixture um, some of these are Kamasa some of them are Tang um, and um, and the reason I have a bit of a mixture is um, uh, some of these sockets either split over the years uh, with use um, or I was missing a size or there wasn't a size in the set that I had originally um, this is a set of uh, so so yeah over the back there that these are all blue point sockets so these are really nice nice sockets um, and um, and then these are brittle these ones here back when brittle were good before uh, Facom damaged the uh, the image of them 
because they bought Brittle and uh, downgraded all of the marketing. Uh, but Brittle were, were a fantastic tool company at one time. Um, so yeah, these are, um, have I mentioned these? These are Brittle 3 8 drive uh, sockets. Uh, on the front here, these are, are Brittle also. These are uh, quarter drive. Um, uh, metric. So all of my sockets are metric apart from these ones here. These are quarter drive, these are imperial and these are I'm not sure what brand these are. I've had these since I was probably 16. Uh, Kamasa probably, um, but they don't have them stamped. I've uh, got some Torx drivers on the front here as well. So all of these are on rails, uh, like I said. Um, little head torch there. A um, couple of impact sockets. i uh, got a big socket here for a hub nut. 36mm, uh, um, which you can't see. No, you can. Um, so I uh, bought that for the hub, not on my Honda Prelude, which I used to have. I've uh, got some wheel sockets here, so they've got a plastic sleeve on them so that they don't damage the alloy wheel. Uh, so anyway, I've tidied up the front here because um, I had all my ratchets up here and it was all a bit of a mess. So what I've done now is I've fitted one of those um, shadow foam inserts into here. I had to cut it to width to fit the drawer. Um, but what I've got in here now is I've got all my ratchets down the one side here. Um, well, these aren't all my ratchets, but these are the ones that I keep to one side for regular use. Um, if I put them all in here, it's, there's no point. Um, so these are the ones that I use the most. So I've got a brittle uh, half inch drive that's got a swivel head. Um, it's it's okay when you need it, but the swivel head is a bit of a pain in the backside sometimes. But other than that, it's an excellent ratchet. I've got uh, a 10 half inch drive ratchet, which is fairly new. Um, and below it here is a 3 8 drive 10 ratchet. I've had this for years and it, as you can see, it's had a lot of use. Um, it's had a bit of abuse as well as tools get used they do pick up war wounds uh, it's been slid along the floor I've probably trodden on it umpteen times uh, but it's a brilliant ratchet it's really comfortable and on a cold day when you're working on the car with this rubberized handle um, it's nice to use uh, I've got a quarter drive Cheng ratchet as well uh, barely been used this one this is pretty new as well uh, below it is a Halfords professional ratchet I've had this, oh, years, years I've had this, maybe, probably 25 years I've had this, maybe longer. Um, and I've stripped it and cleaned it once and it works really well. It's very good. It, uh, this is from back when Halford Stools, um, they're okay, Halford Stools. I'm not going to say they're not because they are, they are, they are reasonably good, especially considering that they have a lifetime warranty um, but this is back when they were better than they are today this is um, a little extension with a handle on it this is health it's professional as well that's pretty handy I don't know if they still make those they might do um, universal joints uh, this one this is a health one this one's a blue point one so that's quarter drive three eighths drive this is a 10 half inch drive uh, quarter drive extensions these two are 10 uh, half inch drive extensions um, 3 8 drive wobble extension that's a Halfords one that's a shorter 3 8 drive wobble extension uh, 3 8 drive 10 extension and this is a blue point uh, 3 8 drive uh, breaker bar so it's all easily accessible. I've put these cutouts here so I can pick these out. Don't have to faff around, rummaging around. They're all, I can, I can withdraw any of these very easily and quickly and they go back in and they nest quite nicely into there. Uh, okay, so that's that drawer. Uh, this drawer um, needs, well, needs a bit of thinking about. Um, I, might, I might put one on here as well, but I don't know. Um, all of these wearer tools, they just sit in their own cases. 
um, and they're quite handy to leave as kits. I had thought about, um, I don't know if you've seen these, but they're really handy. Um, so rather than carrying a huge set of screwdrivers around with you, you can carry this little set around. Uh, so there's Torx, uh, hex drive and Phillips and one slotted. I had thoughts about uh, making an insert for my wearer tool, but um, the thing I really like about these is that I can I can throw it in the car um, if I'm going to go and help somebody somewhere. Um, and uh, I've got a lot of tools in in a in a small package, so this is really handy. Um, this is uh, quarter drive and um, it has these little inserts here. It has an adapter to go from the hexagonal socket uh, screwdriver bit driver, and that goes on to a uh, quarter drive ratchet, which is what this is. Um, so it's, that's quite handy. It's a handy little kit. So that's an example of some of these wearer. Um, I'm not gonna review all of these wearer tools now, but um, they are very good quality and they're quite innovative as well in terms of what they do. Uh, so in here, I've got these wire strippers um, and such. Um, and um, so I might make an insert for this draw, um, but it, it's okay as it is. Um, so, I made one for my screwdriver drawer as well. Uh, so I've got a bit of a mixture in here. Uh, a lot of these screwdrivers go back a long way. They've been with me since, uh, well, since I bought them. I was probably 16 when I bought these uh, Draper screwdrivers, uh, along with other others that, that I have. And then over the years, I, I upgraded from cheaper tools and I, I bought some um, some of these brittle screwdrivers. These are really nice. So these are probably about late 90s, early noughties vintage, um, really excellent screwdrivers. They've got a hex on here. Um, if you can find some of these on eBay, um, new old stock, buy them, I would say, without hesitation, buy them. Um, and um, and if I see them, I'm, I'll definitely be buying them, but they're like hen's teeth these days. Um, I also have some Facom. Um, screwdrivers as well so these are these are quite nice they they're nice to hold but they're both nice brittle and facom are nice to hold um i've got a lot of similar sizes um but anyway they're all in here together so i've got slotted down the right here and then i've got phillips down the left uh, i've got an impact driver that's a silver line impact driver and then some stubby screwdrivers so um I can't actually fit as much in the drawer as I could before, um, but I spend no time rummaging around looking for things because there it is. I can see exactly what I want straight away. Um, if I want a small Phillips screwdriver, it's there. And um, and I don't need to check it. Is it slotted? Is it Phillips? Um, I, it's on the left, so I know it's Phillips and I know where it is. Uh, its position in the drawer tells me um, what size it is. So that's that one. Um, and then um, I've got, this is a bit of a disaster drawer. So this needs some work and some thinking about in terms of how I'm going to lay this one out. But that's a job for another day. Um, this one is quite easy because um, I had these spanners in these foam um, insert trays anyway. So these are Imperial on the left, metric on the right. Uh, I've got some flex head uh, ratchet ring spanners or combination spanners in the middle. Um, <clears throat> the flex head is handy occasionally, but um, I think I'll be buying a set of, um, of fixed head uh, ratchet ring spanners in the near future, hopefully, um, because they flex when you don't want them to. And um, I don't, and it irritates me when I'm using them sometimes. So, uh, yeah, it'd be handy to have a, a set of fixed head uh, ring span, ratchet ring spanners. Uh, when you can't get in with a ratchet, uh, just the ticket. 
So, um, so that's quite well organised. This drawer, um, I just plonked these in here, so I didn't have to do anything special here because these spanners were already in this insert. These are um, ring spanners, obviously. Uh, these are made by Baco. Um, I bought these quite a few years ago. Um, didn't realise, well, I didn't pay a huge amount of money for them, um, but they're quite expensive now. These are about, I think about 80 quid for a set of these now, which is quite expensive really, because they're not, they're all right, but they're, you know, they're, um, they're fairly, fairly uh, rough spanners really, that it's not like they've been uh, polished and presented that nicely. They're, they're just fairly robust and industrial esque. Um, I've got these Torx spanners. These are dead handy because you can't always get in um, with a socket. Um, so I changed the wishbones on my BMW E92 um, and um, I'm sure I had to get in with one of these, um, which is why I bought the set. So these are Halfords Advanced. Uh, they changed the, the brand name uh, or the branding from professional to advanced, but these have a lifetime warranty as well. And that's really why I buy Halford's tools because I'm not I'm not a, a mechanic by trade. Um, I've worked on cars since I was a kid. Um, so, uh, but I, you know, I don't buy expensive tools because I don't use them all the time. Um, I've got some Baco adjustable spanners here, so they just sit there. Um, there's no such thing as a good adjustable spanner, I was told when I was an apprentice. Uh, some are better than others, but there's no such thing as a good adjustable spanner. So, there you go. Um, got some Torx keys here. These range from, well, doesn't really matter, does it? Um, but they range from T15 up to T4, T, I think. Yeah. Uh, so they're handy had to get one of those claim um changed recently at Alfred's because one of them broke um and this is my pliers drawer um so this is another insert that i uh, made for the specifically for this and um so i've got more grips down the left i've got um a brake pipe clamp or a hose clamp there um that's this used to belong to my dad this is made by girling so that's, and that's quite a bit older than me, and I'm in my 40s. A um, couple of Stilson wrenches here, different sizes. Absolutely worth, worth their weight in gold they are. They have saved my bacon a number of times. So if you don't have a Stilson wrench, um, I would definitely buy one. These are made by record, so they're good quality. Uh, I have um, a set of circlet pliers with um various kind of attachments for different types so uh depending on whether it's an internal or an external circlip uh, and whether you can get straight onto it or you need to get an angle on it so some of them have a little bend in them and then the other ones are straight and um and then various sets of pliers so i've got three sets of combination pliers three different sizes um, do I need three? No, one would do, but I have three, so I made a space for them. A uh, small pair of side cutters, slightly bigger si pair of side cutters, a uh, small pair of long nose pliers, and then a pair of long reach long nose pliers. These are really handy as well, extremely handy. These have helped me out quite a few times. And that's about it really for the tool organization um father christmas brought me this uh box in the middle uh, so that's why it's less faded than the others um so the this stack of toolboxes i bought from uh halfords as you can tell the name gives it away um i probably had these 15 years um so that's why the the pigment in the red paint has gone a little bit faded um right so uh, that's probably it for this bit. So the last thing I was just going to talk about is the uh, the Myford. And um, I'm looking at 
options for implementing a, an electronic lead screw onto the machine. And some of you might hear that and scratch your heads and think, oh, but you've got a quick change gearbox on there and you, and you change the gears when you need to go to a metric thread. And yeah, I have to change the gears when I go to a metric thread and it's annoying me. So, um, so what I'm planning to do is to implement an electronic lead screw, but um, rather than do away with the, the uh, quick change gearbox and all of the drivetrain that exists in here, um, I have a cunning plan. And um, what I don't want to do is permanently modify the machine so that, um, you know, it's, it's no longer a Myford Super 7 in its configuration that it was designed to be. Um, so I've been racking my brain and I've been thinking, well, I know some people have attached um, a toothed pulley onto the hand wheel on the end of here to drive the lead screw. Um, so I was thinking about that and then I thought, well, the motor would have to have quite a lot of dry, uh, quite a lot of torque um, because it would be driving the gearbox and I thought, well, okay, I could, I could put the gearbox into, into a neutral position, um, and um, but then you run the risk of it jumping into a gear, or or maybe gears just slightly rubbing, or or just starting to mesh. And uh, no, I didn't like that idea, and I thought that there's going to be quite a lot of um, resistance um, to the system. So I have a cunning plan and um, it will mean uh, a slight modification to the machine that's irreversible. Um, so uh, it's not as ominous as that sounds though. Um, so it, do, it, it will mean uh, making some changes. Um, and when I say irreversible changes, there might be two or three tapped holes in the front of the apron that don't exist now that will exist probably in the future if I go with um, what I'm thinking of doing. So um, so the motivation for this is to be able to uh, cut metric threads. Um, so um, what I want to be able to do is to use the gearbox for various uh, machining, normal uh, feeding for uh, normal um, you know non-thread cutting and then what I want to be able to do is um, is utilize an electronic lead screw for mainly cutting metric threads um, without having to go through all the faff with swapping the change gears around so that's the plan so um, so I'm going to be going through that in a bit more detail in a in a in my next video most likely where I'll be running through the design concept of what I'm going to build. Um, and um, so that's going to be my next major project. Um, so it's likely to take um, more time than my normal projects because it's a bit more involved and it's a bit more complex, but, um, and I'll be dabbling with some electronics at some point um, but the, the main the main thing first will be to get the thing set up mechanically so that um, I've got all of that done. And to be able to do that, I'm going to need to get this thing powered up and I need a phase converter for this. So until I get that bought and wired up, um, the poor old bridge port is sitting here um, without any power. And that's and that makes me sad. So we'll have to remedy that. So anyway, that's um, that's it for now. So uh, quick um, update video on the workshop and future plans. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. Hope everyone's fitting well. And um, I'll uh, see you soon on uh, the next video. Bye for now.